was proud, and so he told her, Was duty call him far away? Where'er I roam, whatever befalls me, you will not call. And we'll love you to the last. One day there came a letter With a passage to age to go To the land of the Missouri What's beyond you never know So she had all And this morning at the dawn, a broken hearted mother parted with for no reason. Many years that we know waited till one morning at the dawn. Pastor Comp, back near this Lockton Abbey, up left to the cross of the wood, in the cross of the Warren Bog, and down by Clown Mac, and that was where I got to the store. So they built the road, be about 230 or 40 years ago now since it was built. And I was just thinking of the machinery that was there the last day, and what it must have been like to build those roads on bushes and branches of trees, and that which was the way they did at that time. But I wrote a little verse one time as a compliment to a man that made an awful difference to road building and farming and all the rest. And that was uh, John Saddle Bamford, clogger squeezed between the hill and sea. Their nothing ever seemed to change since first beheld by man. Their nature ruled the road supreme, and none could change his plan. In stagnant pools and sluggish streams, the eels and fogs held court. While fuzz and boils and mighty clumps concealed the fox and stored. Their rabbits of all sizes played and gambled in the sun, 
and bore deep in empty banks as their forebears had done. From that to men their duty shirked or quite ignored their call, just in farming like a clogger, their backs up to the wall. Being extinguished, they run down my face in tears. This heart of mine is breaking, it's pounding in my breast. Still everybody tells me, you know it's for the best. But today I lose my best friend. As I leave you both behind, both you, my love, and Ireland will be always on my mind. I'm sitting by the window as the ship sails out to sea. The flashing lights of Tusker are my only company. And for a few brief, brief moments, we share our last farewell. Who knows how long it will be before I see her lights again.
that her name was Rogine and she was a student and she was sharing the flat, the, the rent in the flat with Johnny. No fool Johnny, you know. <laughs> but anyway, she had three great days in Dublin anyway, around the shops, <coughs> the museums and everywhere. And it was time for her to go off home anyway. So Johnny dropped her over to the station again and off she went. A couple of days after when he, she got this note from Johnny, is there any chance, she said, Roisin had a little, a little tray that she used to have here in the sick room. Is there any chance you put it into your luggage by mistake? So she wrote back anyway. God, Johnny, she said, I had a great couple of days in Dublin. What about the little tray? No, I didn't put it into my baggage at all, she said. But I left it, it but if Noreen had slept in her own bed since I left, <laughs> she'd have found the little tray where I left it for her. <laughs> Why do I weep? 
as smiling so my love could see. He answered her smile, and then after a while, the only stranger there was me. The lights of love are far behind, and thoughts of hope and are fresh in my mind. But my heart will 
the grand place to be on a fine summer's day. To view the white flowers that never decay. The hair and the pheasants are plain to be seen from the high rocky slopes from the
have from the job we've grown harder than people may think. The night we got married, sure I near slip a wink. The wife kept that day, called me a clown, said I'm doing nothing for the blue and half crown. I'm a young married man and I'm tired of life, half kid and half crazy from this strap of a wife. If we haven't a family, tis me she will drown. Since the blue moon thing started, I'm nearly half dead. Last night we broke down all the springs in the bed. Said she is no use, for I'm now 63. Oh, be dead, and says I, there's no half crown for me. So now I resemble a half hungry goose, every bone in my body disjointed and loose. The cause of my death will be the blue moon half crown. So all the young fellows, about to be wed, check your wife's age, don't do like me, have her tell you your, <coughs> sorry no. Oh, well, why does no, the old Suban chairs all ran by the wall, and that old iron kettle shined away. I'll be glad with a mighty gladness when I'm lifting that latch again. For what is the city's luring, the calling of streets or flats, when a wind from the hills of West Limerick is blowing across your heart? And where can one find contentment in this world of striving men, when a silver-haired mother in Ireland is praying you back home again? 
Sure, tis many a time and oft when the Rockies loomed to the skies, I dreamed of her saying the rosary as the soft winds of night went by. And I knew that the dear Lord who hurt her was setting my homeward track for the sake of a mother in Ireland who longed for her own gossu back. And grandfather's heart on the wall, his thousand was filled with the copper, the party they said you left me. The bacon it hung from the ceiling, sure the story I tell you is true. We went in the crowd to my Sundays, and Granddaddy wore his best hat. The priest he spoke from the altar, but all the women in different seats sat. Matchmaking was part of tradition, the rambling house filled up at night. The tailor he told the ghost stories, all the children would shiver with fright. I remember the sound of the anvil and the burning parcels we could smell. As we passed the porch door in the evening, which water we fetch from the well. We spancel the cows before milking, tie the horse through the wall, through the shoe. His collar and hames, the winkers and reins, and the harness we kept in white noon. Walk miles to the fairs in the darkness, with our animals we walk with delight. When the waiting and dealing was over, everyone waited on her advice. Now I hope that in telling the story,